number one question I always get asked is what type of gear I actually use to create these type of videos. show you exactly what I use and why. So the number one camera I use to actually shoot these type of videos is the A7S 3 So the A7S 3 allows you to shoot 4K at 100 FPS, so 100 frames per second. So with that 100 frames per second, it actually allows you to slow down your footage at four times. So really, really slow. So you can get those amazing speed ramps. Uh, and with the 4K, it allows you to kind of move with the image to so do zoom in zoom outs in post-production without kind of losing that quality so highly recommend this camera it's a beautiful camera to use um, in saying that i actually also shoot with 50 frames per second and with the 50 frames per second you can actually use an active stabilization within the camera and that stabilization makes your shots way way smoother so i kind of shoot um, both things, um, the 50 frames per second and the 100 frames per second, depending on what you want. 50 frames per second allows you to do a slow motion, really smooth shots, but the 100 FPS 4K allows you to kind of shoot really, really slow motion footage, but it doesn't have the stabilization as the 50 frames in the camera. So I kind of switch between these two. So with this camera, I also shoot a picture profile called S-Log3. Now S-Log3 just has a bigger dynamic range. So you can shoot uh, in daylight without having those highlights blowing out too much. Um, you just have more room to kind of play within color grading in post-production and that's exactly why I use S-Log3. Uh, it's a bit harder to shoot in the S-Log, but it's worth it if you get used to it. And I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials on how to shoot S Look 3 in these cameras. So that is the camera I use predominantly for my video effects. So there's one thing I actually forgot to mention about the A7S 3 is it's amazing in low light. Um, it's got two native ISOs. This camera is an absolute beast. Now how to get my shots really, really, really smooth is using a gimbal. Now this is like a must. You must have one of these in order to create really, really smooth shots from one shot to the next doing speed ramps. So without a gimbal, your shots are gonna be shaky as all hell. No matter how much stabilization you have in a, in a camera, you cannot get that really smooth shot without using a gimbal. An example of how my footage is so smooth, it's legit the gimbal doing all the work. I'm moving like this and the camera is staying pretty straight. So that is really useful. So I use the RS2. Uh, it's a beautiful gimbal. You definitely need one for shooting these type of effects. Now with this gimbal, I also use an attachment arm. So this arm actually allows you to hold with two hands and kind of create a bit more stability. It kind of helps your back also when actually doing those movements walking around but predominantly it actually helps with the stabilization of your footage. Instead of holding with one hand or down here, you've actually got two grips to kind of get those slow motion shots with really good stabilization walking around the car. So that's one of the attachments I use. It's not a necessity, but it definitely, definitely helps with the smoothness of your shot. So now with TikTok, Instagram, and even YouTube with YouTube Shorts now, everything is going from landscape to actually portrait because everyone uses their phones to actually uh, view everything these days. So in saying that, when shooting with a gimbal, you can't actually shoot portrait style unless you have a cage. So you need the cage to actually have the attachment down here to shoot portrait rather than landscape because it doesn't come with the gimbals. So highly recommend it if you want to be shooting like this more. So when it comes to lenses, a wide angle lens is key for that stability kind of walking around the car. Um, if you're shooting something like 50 millimeters plus, you're kind of getting that shake and it's just, it doesn't, it makes it really difficult to do those speed ramps. So you need a kind of wider lens. So say like a, a 24 to say 
16 millimeter. In between that range will help you out a lot with your smooth shots walking around the car. So I currently use the 24 to 12 millimeter f4 lens. You can get the 2.8 as well, f2.8. But the 12, uh, 24 to 12 millimeter lens is ideal. You kind of have that flexibility to push in and pull out with your shots. Um, but yeah, this is the lens I use majority of the time when walking around the car. Now my second choice of lens is the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter. Now this lens here kind of helps you with the detailed shots, so the kind of close up shots. You need a few of those within your thing to kind of break up from all those wide shots, kind of speed ramps around. So I highly recommend this lens. Just keep in mind, you can't use this lens for the whole thing. Or you could, but you're gonna make it really difficult on yourself when you're trying to walk around and you're shooting at 75 millimeters and you're getting this shape because you're so zoomed in. Um, it's really difficult. Um, you can do it. You just gotta get really good at your ninja walks when you're walking around. Um, but highly recommend this lens for your detailed shots, kind of kind of shooting the steering wheel, close up to the wheels and things like that as you're walking around. But the wide angle lens is definitely key for those majority of your shots. Now another piece of equipment I highly recommend when making these videos are drones. Drones are absolutely amazing. They help you out. They're super smooth. You get shots that not many people can get from above without a drone um, and yeah it just makes life so much easier. You can kind of use active tracking on the DJI drones where you can pinpoint the car, target it and then just press go and the drone will just spin around the car just tracking it and it makes it super smooth, makes it really easy for speed ramps. So in that case that's why I choose a drone to 100% help with my footage. So in saying that, I use the Mavic 2 Pro Zoom. Uh, you can also use the Mavic 2 Pro Air or the Mavic 3. All those will work, they all have 4K. Really useful drones, they're super quality and will definitely, definitely up your value of your videos. 100%, highly recommend. Get a drone, now. So I know the A7S III is really expensive and I have this as my backup camera, the A7 III. So the a7 III shoots 100 FPS, so 100 frames per second still, which is really good. Creates those slow motion shots just like the a7S III, although it shoots it at 1080, not 4K. So you can definitely use this. It's really good camera still. Um, obviously you don't get that 4K quality to do those punch-ins, pull-outs and all that in post-production, but still highly recommend using this if you can't afford an a7S III. So the a7 III here, I currently have a battery pack on as well. This battery pack kind of allows you to chuck two, um, two batteries instead of one. So it just gives you a longer life and it also gives you a better grip. So in regards to picture profiles, I use Cine 2 on this one. Um, I find it's really crisp and the, you don't have as much noise, especially with this camera with S-Log 3, it's a pain in the ass. You can do it, it's just not as good. So, here is an example of my exact setup.